In the world of uh, sumo robots, there's actually uh, I don't know, controversy, there's discussion over how to optimize your robot's weight distribution the best in terms of uh, the long axis. Do you want more weight over your tires versus your blade? Because if you have more weight over your tires, you can get more traction. If you have more weight over your blade, it's harder to get underneath the robot because as soon as a robot, your opponent gets under you and lifts you up, it transfers your weight onto their robot and they have more traction and then you're done. So, as it turns out, Simple Sumo's uh, penny roof setup, it, it's actually really easy to, to test and compare each one strategy versus the other. And what I've also got here is some equipment to do a quick experiment, uh, not just head-to-head -head stuff, but to, we can show with a free body diagram and physics equations how the weight distribution changes as you, uh, as you reallocate the mass to different places on the robot we can calculate exactly where the robot's center of mass is uh, and that's actually useful too for see on the underside of this robot the blade extends that far down um, we can use the calculated center of mass to see exactly how far over the the edge you could go before you tip over so I guess the strategy in that case would be the farther back you go um, the farther the more weight you have in the back the farther over the edge you can go without flipping over so that's one one tick in the column of you know, weight in the back. Uh, I guess on the other hand, there's also kind of a practical uh, standpoint is whenever you have all your weight in the back, it does make it easier to do a wheelie. I guess I'll show you that when we get to that thing. So first, the free body diagram. It's just a very simple uh, robot. There's uh, this is the robot and the overall mass of the robot is the applied through the center of gravity. There's a force that goes down. And then there's two normal reaction forces, one on the rear tires and one on the blade. And um, between them, I've already measured the weights for a standard sumo, and uh, this is the weight on each of these points. And you can measure that yourself with two tiny scales, and you just kind of put them on the uh, little balance thing like that, and this is just direct measurements that you can make. So using just that information, uh, and also knowing, because I have CAD for these, I know exactly what the distance is between this point and this point. Um, with that information, we can calculate exactly this X location of the center of, of center, center of mass. So we start by, if we want to find it, we start by saying uh, at point B, which is right here, um, the sum of all the moments is equal to zero because it's not rotating. So th that statement is true. And if I just define rotation in that direction to be positive, I can write this equation. So the normal force on the rear tire times its x distance from the center of mass uh, minus, and this is negative because the normal force on the front would make it spin backwards, so minus that times its distance from the center of mass. Um, similarly, and we, we would have gotten the same result in the end, you could also have, have said this about any point on this, on this line here. At point A, you would get a different equation, but the end result will end up being the same. Now, the second important equation is just um, is the x distance uh, between the two, between these two points, is 60 millimeters. And that's something you can make with a direct measurement with a ruler or have CAD. Um, so now with Picking either one of these equations and this equation, we have two equations and two unknowns. So you could you could you know do some substitution or elimination and do whatever tricks. I'm going to use Wolfram Alpha because <clears throat> it works faster. It's like a, the smartest calculator uh, available to me that I remember how to use anymore. So it says x is 22, roughly. I'm going to I'm going to round it is 20 oh my goodness let's try that 22 and x2 is 30 38 let's see if i put a little loop there it's i just can't write like that all right um so we can see does this make sense x1 is smaller than x2 so the center of gravity is closer to the back than it is to the front and yes, that makes sense because we have more weight in the back. Great. So now that we know that, let's do an experiment. I've got two scales, two sumos, and two penny holding roofs. 
They are, I've already measured them, they have the same mass. Now what we're gonna do is take this one and put all that mass as far back as we can. And then uh, we'll take this one and put it as far front as we can. So red is back, gray is front. Touch off. There we go. Yeah. So ready they're rearing to go. So let's run the experiment. Red has all the weight in the back. Gray has all the weight in the front. Yeah, oh, there we go. Red's the winner. Oh, you put us off my soda. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, so as long as you're not, if they don't do the backup move, which makes it do a wheelie, if they did that at the wrong time, it would have a disadvantage. But the blades on the simple sumos, the blades on the simple sumos are not so sharp. Man, I spilled my soda. They're not so sharp that they can really do a great job of getting underneath each other. I, it's the, the how much force they can physically push has the most effect. And for that reason, putting your weight all in the back gives you the advantage. Hope you enjoyed.